Entering last night's game, Jake Odorizzi had been bad, but the Mariners failed to capitalize on his struggles and could not get a single run off the Astros all night, continuing a troubling trend of boom or bust for the offense. So what's got to change? Can anything be changed? Let's talk about it here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Tuesday, May 3rd, 2022, and this is the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. I am your host, Titan Gonzalez, reporter and editor at allseahawks.com. Joined, as always, by my co-host, Colby Patno. Be sure to follow the show on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez, that's D-A-N-E-G-N-Z-L-Z, and Colby at CPAT11, that's C-P-A-T-1-1. Be sure to also check out our Patreon, where we talk about the Mariners even more and also get into some non-baseball talk twice a week visit patreon.com forward slash control the zone for more information on that if you are interested and want more of us and if this is your first time joining us here on the lockdown mariners podcast welcome to the show hi how are you if you like what you hear give us a follow or subscribe wherever you're listening to this and if you're watching us on youtube hit the subscribe button turn on the notification bell give this video a thumbs up we greatly appreciate it we're talking more about kyle lewis and some roster moves we weren't able to get to on yesterday's episode we're also going to get you set for tonight's matchup between the Astros and Mariners. But first, as we discussed in our cold open, the Mariners got shut out by Jake Odorizzi and the Astros last night. 3-0 the score. This is already the third time the Mariners have been shut out this season, and it was another bad performance by the offense against a mediocre pitcher. Colby, this perfectly illustrated the boomer bust nature of the Mariners lineup, didn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Um, there's just so much uncertainty in the lineup on a night-by-night basis. There's not a lot of probability um, outside of Ty France and J.P. Crawford right now. Uh, just about everybody else is struggling. The catchers have been fine still, Terrence and Murphy. Mm. Uh, Terrence did get, a, did get a hit last night. Murphy had a really nice series in Miami. So right now it's, it's kind of three spots you can kind of consistently count on production. Um, and, you know, Eugenio Suarez has been ice cold this road trip. Um, you know, Toro has been – up and down all season. Adam Frazier also up and down all season. Uh, Winker, we know all about his uh, issues with with luck, um, basically at this stage. Um, and then it's it's basically coming down to do you get something from Julio uh, to kind of help push you over the top, or or are you going to suffer the fate that you did last night and get shut down by a mediocre at best starting pitcher? So it's there. There's a lot of a lot of questions um, left to be answered and, and, you know, we're about a month in and the offense has been very, I, I think inconsistent is the best word for it. Um, mm-hmm. There are days where they'll go out and they'll put up five runs against Sandy Alcantara and put together a bunch of really good at bats. And then the next day they go out and they get shut down by a number six starting pitcher. So I think inconsistent is probably the, the, the best word to describe this offense. And it's just, it's not good enough. And, you know, unfortunately there's not a ton they can do in terms of additions within their organization to try and uh, make this thing better. Yeah. I talked about it last night on my lockdown now video that we posted on here and on Twitter that this lineup is too talented for this. This is inexcusable for this stuff to keep on happening at the rate that it's happening here to start the season. And yeah, it's early. But again, that's kind of the point, though. It's early, and there have already been three shutouts. There have been other games where they've only scored one run and have looked completely hopeless otherwise. It's just they need better production out of this lineup because it is too talented for this. So is there a fix? Is it as simple as a lineup change? Is it, what do you think? What do you think might get the Mariners back on track here? Maybe put together some more consistency. If the guys start hitting, like that's really the fix. I mean, it's, it's stupid and it's cliche, but like, yeah. what are you supposed to do? I mean, you need guys to hit and they're not hitting. So you need guys to, to put up the numbers they put up on the back of their baseball cards. And that, that includes Frazier and Winker and Suarez. Um, and even Toro, uh, to, to an extent. So you need those guys to step up a little bit. Um, and 
right now they're not either, whether it's, it's bad luck or bad at bats or a combination of all of it. They're just not, they're not, they're not performing like they need to. Um, I guess one mm-hmm. thing you can try to do until they, they kind of find where they're supposed to be. Um, so you can try shuffling the lineup a little bit. Uh, there's no reason whatsoever for JP Crawford to hit behind Suarez. Um, and we saw that last night, uh, unfortunately in the ninth, uh, Crawford, your best hitter standing on deck while Suarez grounds into a weak double play, uh, to end the game. I mean, you could have had Crawford up as the tie and run, uh, you know, continue to put more pressure. So, uh, I, I think, you know, you might want to consider putting Crawford back in the leadoff spot, uh, tie France right behind him, try and get those two guys as many at bats as possible to kind of improve your odds and, and, you know, maybe it's time to move Julio up a little bit. Uh, he had another hit last night. Now, he's already up to six, though, so I don't know if you want to push him any further than that. And then the catchers have the catchers can't hit ninth anymore. Um, they're just again, they're one of your only positions that's consistently performing. They need to be five, six, seven, and against the lefty, probably four, three or four. Um, either one of them because they both hit lefties very well. So, yeah, I just. There's not a ton you can do, but I think if you're just trying to just kind of ride this wave here, uh, maybe it's time to put J.P. Crawford at the leadoff spot um, or at least put him ahead of, of Suarez and uh, probably Frazier. So, um, but again, other than that, I just have to hit. I mean, it's 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 a lame answer, I'll admit, but it's it's the correct one. Guys have to hit, period. Hey, maybe JP in the cleanup spot because the P stands for power, of course. But um, no, I'm with you, though. He he should be in the leadoff spot at this point, especially with some of Frazier's struggles. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the idea of moving up Julio because I think it honestly would benefit him more to have maybe some protection behind him in the lineup because, frankly, he doesn't have that right now. He's got Jared right. Kelnick hitting behind him for the or he's had Jared Kelnick hitting behind him for the most part. Um, if I'm a, an opposing pitcher, if I'm an opposing manager... I'm not respecting Julio in that situation when I got Kelnick on deck, unless the bases are loaded. You know, I'm not, I'm not respecting him in that in, in that way. You know, I'm going to uh, try to uh, cherry pick around him, and so that's not really going to create for a lot of great opportunities for <laughs> Julio. So maybe having someone like Jesse Winker behind him instead, or Eugenio Suarez behind him instead. Maybe get some some more favorable pitches where guys have to pitch to, at him and they can't just you know work around him because they know that they have Jared Kelnick behind him or uh, you know before that Cal Raleigh or, or Luis Torrens or, or or what have you at the time you know so yeah I would like to see them move up Julio I would I I think it's absolutely a no brainer at this point to move Crawford into the uh, leadoff spot right now um, and move Frazier down maybe not move Frazier down all the way to nine but maybe six maybe seven. In the lineup, It'd be, and um, it would be nice if you could so, break up kind of the strikeout guys of Suarez, Rodriguez, and Kelnick. Yeah, and Frazier's yeah, a good candidate yeah. to do that. Frazier and Toro are good candidates to do that. Mm-hmm, so indeed, you can, and then go ahead. I I I know that you are in favor of actually moving Winker up in the lineup, but right now mm-hmm. it's just because the results aren't really there. Do you? I, to me, I just I don't really want to give that guy the third most at bats on the team right now until the results start coming. Because even though that there is quality contact there, there's a lot of hard hit balls there, especially on this road trip. It's just the results still aren't coming, and it's just it, it kind of feels like I'm wasting the third most opportunities in my lineup on that right now. So until but the results come, to? I honestly I would consider moving Winker down until the results start coming. And then bringing him up, Julio. You want to hit Julio third? Because frankly, Julio's been a little bit more productive right now. Probably, yeah. That's insane. No, Julio striking out. Like I mean, because there's because the there's more, but there's more protection there for him. He's hitting better than Winker right now in terms of just results. So you're it's moving just, Julio up I, to help I, Julio, not the team. Not really. I think I'm also helping the team until Winker How? starts getting better results in that situation. Nope. There's like because one guy he's on the hitting, team. He's having gets, more success. There's like one guy on the team who's gotten on base more than Jesse Winker. Well, yeah, he's he's getting his walks, but he's not finding grass a lot of the time, and he's popping up. He's in a du- into double plays. He's not so, taking advantage of opportunities. I don't know if he should get the third most at bats on the team right now. 
So you want to you want to punish Jesse Winker for being the king of bad luck. I don't necessarily want to punish him. You're, I just his... want to throw him down a, a couple of spots to maximize my potential output for a couple of days. And this is a fluid situation that, that could change day to day. And if he starts hit, if he starts finding more grass, then you move him up. Realize his expected batting average this year is three twenty five. Yes, I know he's had a lot of bad luck. His I'm not expected saying otherwise. slugging is four ninety one. I'm just saying that this. I'm just saying that it continues, though. It just continues and continues and continues. And at a certain point, I feel and like you got to put results over expectations. And I don't know if, if moving him down is going to help you get those results. So what difference does it make? Well, I just, I don't know. It, it's 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 not really about, like, moving him down for the sake of, like, hey, we'll get results then. It's more like... I don't want to use that particular spot for the same kind of results that we're getting right now. Does that make sense? Am I explaining that right? No. But um, to me, <laughs> it sounds like your solution is actually then to move Jesse Winker to the leadoff spot. He's going to see a ton of pitches. He's going to draw more than his fair share of walks. He's going to hit the ball hard. He's going to, And as a result of seeing more pitches, in theory, that should help him break out of this slump that he's in. Um, so why not just put him in the leadoff spot, let him draw his walks, and put JP at the three and ty- keep Ty, ty gar- France at the but, two. But guaranteeing the most unlucky hitter on your team, the most at bats in your lineup, that just, I don't so know, man. Base that, 34% of the time. I know, but he's not, but uh, all right. You know, I, I, I get it. I get, I get your argument. I really do. I get your argument because, because of the walks, because of the on-base percent. <laughs> you know, because it's I the correct your, I, argument. Yes. The on-base, the on-base potential, but the results overall from a hitting standpoint are just not there right now. I think you just move them down and treat oh, it as a very fluid I, situation I where see, you just, where you switch it On up. a day by day basis. It's all about results, not process. Okay. Okay. Fine. After a month's worth of games, when there really reward, aren't results, reward still. bad process. Okay, that's fine. Reward that's fine. bad process. Julio Rodriguez just, strikes out thirty five percent of the time. Better than Jesse Winker, so put him at the three hole. Okay. I, cool. Look, he's right been on, playing man. great over the last. He's been playing mm-hmm. great for the last week, Julio, and I, I think you should reward him. And again, they did. They situation plays. Six. Yeah, go with the hot hand. Yeah, they moved him up to six. He's look. There are not five better hitters in the lineup right now, producing at a at a at the level of Julio Rodriguez right and now. Put him at They're five. Just not. Put him at five. All right, fine. Put him at five. Put him over Eugenio Suarez. Just fine. bring him up. But I do, well, I do think that they the should three. consider moving Winker down until there's better results there, other than walks, other than the walks. He's because the walks are fine. Second, he's literally your second best hitter. I mean, talent wise, yes, absolutely. No, Even probably like, the best. He's he's probably yeah, he's probably the best bat in this lineup. Yeah. I but just, right now the I mean, results aren't aren't the second best on the team. And I'm how does how how is he supposed to change the results? I'm not saying that he, it's his fault. I'm just saying that you, you should just probably him. in terms of he said he struggled. I did I did I just said that the results aren't there. That, that, that's and you're not saying a, that that's... it's his. You're saying it's his fault. The results aren't there, so move him down. Because if it's not his no, fault, just... the results aren't there, then there's no reason to move him down. He's not doing anything. I'm just wrong. saying you move him down just to maximize your lineup output right now. No. Just to maximize your output line, uh, your your lineup output, so that you can get the most successful <clears throat> hitters towards the top of the lineup and guarantee them the most at bats. Why is that so hard to understand? Because right you're now wrong. and uh, treat you know it what? as a fluid situation i i i think we're i think we need to run into an ad break but uh yeah. hey you know what? you're <laughs> wrong that's fine uh and i assume sure. your pick to click tonight is going to be jesse winker so there you go absolutely absolutely <laughs> honestly we might have to retire picks to click though because it, it, it hasn't gone so well for either one of us the last couple times we've done it um all right, so let's stick with the outfield, though, here, because that's been a, a big topic of discussion the last few days. Mitch Hanniger going on the uh, IL. There's been a positive development in Kyle Lewis's recovery. And we're going to tell you what that is, what it means, and we're also going to touch on a couple of roster moves the Mariners made yesterday. But first, let me tell you about LinkedIn Jobs. With spring in the air, it's a time of renewal and growth, just like the Mariners lineup needs right now. As your small business grows, LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 800 
110 million people. Then add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. This episode of Lockdown Mariners is also brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online is where the game starts. You're listening to Lockdown Mariners. Thank you again for making and that's your first listen of the day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. There are recaps of MLB games with analysis from our local experts taking fans through the season like no other network. It is free and available wherever you get your podcasts, just like us. So, Colby, mm-hmm. today the uh, the Mariners made the official announcement that Kyle Lewis is going on a rehab assignment to AAA Tacoma. He is going to Salt Lake. That's where they're playing tonight for a, uh, what is it, a six-game series with Salt Lake? starting this week all the way through Sunday. And uh, yeah, he's finally going to be playing in uh, real games. I mean, he has been playing in extended spring training the last couple of weeks, been getting at bats, uh, been playing some left field, been mostly dh We'll see how they uh, they do that in Tacoma with him. Uh, but I would assume that this is still going to take a while for him to, uh, to get back to the Major League roster. Uh, he's got the... Uh, you know, he's he's still got a lot of time to make up for here. He missed all the spring training, obviously had some extended spring training here. But I still, if I had to guess, I'd say we're still probably, assuming that everything goes well for him, and plus they also have an option that they can still use. So when it's time for him to be activated, they, they can choose to just keep him down there. But I would assume that we're probably three, maybe four weeks still off from seeing Kyle Lewis at the major league level, right? He hasn't played in almost a calendar year now at the big league level. Um, and we don't even know if he can or what he can do in the outfield. We're, we're kind of wondering. Mm-hmm. It sounds like they're going to DH him a lot, um, but you can't really. Kyle Lewis loses a ton of value if he's not in the field. Um, so you are going to have to kind of try and work that around and, and try and uh, see if he can play center field at all, see if he can play left, see if he can handle left field. Um, obviously right now all you're looking to do is get him at bats, get, get the eyes trained, get the swing in the right place. And then you're going to start to see things. You're going to see him, um, at some point they're going to see if they can, if he can play in the outfield on back to back days, like that's going to be a huge hurdle. Um, you know, maybe it's left field for a day and then he DHs for two for a while, but eventually you are going to have to see if he can play left field two days in a row without any pain. Um, and it's, that's probably going to be the biggest hurdle right now. Uh, again, thankfully he is, he has played games, so he should have that conditioning about where it needs to go. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of things. It's, it's the numbers really aren't going to matter that much. Um, you probably want to look at strikeouts, um, and walks. Those are probably the only two numbers that mean anything. How well is he tracking the baseball? Um, and then you're going to want to see him play in the outfield a couple days, uh, in a row and probably three times within five day stretch or something like that before you feel confident putting him on the big league roster. So maybe that only takes a couple weeks. Uh, the max they can have him down there on the rehab assignment is 20 games. Um, but again, Lewis does have options. So if they get to the 20 game mark and they still feel like he needs a little more time, they can just option him down to uh, to AAA. And it's essentially mm-hmm. just an extended rehab stint. But yeah, getting Lewis, if Lewis is back and he's swinging the bat, even as well as he did last year, that's a huge addition coming to the Seattle Mariners because, you know, Kyle Lewis, I, I feel mm-hmm. like people forget how good um, Lewis is. And uh, even with his, you know, kind of meh numbers last year, he's still a 107 WRC plus guy. And adding one extra, uh, you know, league average bat to this lineup right now would be huge. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah, and there's obviously the upside of being, you know, slightly above average to well above average for him as well. Um, and you know, you don't want to count much on the defense right now uh, with him coming off of the injury. So that's kind of just an added bonus, whatever he's able to give you in the field. But in terms of the bat, uh, that would be massive <laughs> for the lineup. We mm-hmm. talked a little bit about it yesterday with the impact of the Hanniger injury and all that. Um, so joining Lewis in Tacoma is Justice Sheffield and Donovan Walton. They were sent down yesterday. We weren't able to get to this yesterday, uh, but they were sent down yesterday because rosters have gone back down to 26 all around the league. Uh, so only 26 players now uh, being able to be carried on all of these major league rosters. Um, there are no limits on pitchers, of course, uh, until the end of this month. They extended that because of the uh, the impact of the lockout and all that stuff. But um, as for Sheffield, we talked about this a little bit when we were talking about the, uh, the cut down to 26 uh, last week, that Sheffield probably would benefit more from getting stretched out down in Tacoma than he would pitching Mm -hmm. maybe once a week with the Mariners, which is pretty much what he was doing. I think he's only thrown four or five innings in total this year and the month uh, and the season is already a month old pretty much. So um, are you glad that they did this with Sheffield, that he was one of the guys that ended up going down? Yeah, just, he didn't really make sense in this, in this, uh, on this team, even, you know, even with 28 guys, honestly, uh, the Mariners clearly don't trust him. They didn't use him. Now you can take him down to AAA. He can get stretched out a little bit. Um, hopefully he performs well. Maybe he can salvage some trade value. Maybe he can work on something of a slider or maybe it's a cutter. Um, maybe he can, he can learn a new pitch or something uh, that can help him be useful to the Mariners down the stretch. I um, mean, if nothing else, if, if some pitcher gets hit in the, in the arm with a line drive and and you need a guy to come up and fill his rotation spot, and you don't want to, you know, put Kirby on the forty man just yet uh, for one spot start. Then you have a, at least a stretched out Justice Sheffield uh, that you can turn to, who not going to be great, but he has been good in the past. So maybe you can figure something out there. So uh, yeah, it's the right move. Uh, just add a, another starting pitcher to your to your depth. Um, I think he's still behind Kirby. Uh, maybe even Levi Stout at this point. Uh, so I, I wouldn't expect him to come up unless there was some kind of an emergency. And hopefully he can just go down there mm. and just actually work on some things and not worry about the results. Uh, just go down there and, and keep throwing the slider. Keep, you know, keep, maybe you go back to the four seam fastball. Um, maybe there's, you can, maybe they, maybe they put him down there and they actually put him in the bullpen. And they, they quicken up his delivery and, and they try to extract value out of him that way. Maybe he's not going down to, uh, to you know stretch to you know stretch his uh, stretch his innings. Maybe he's going down there to actually work on being a reliever and and they'll let him start games. Mm-hmm. But they're three inning starts and he's doing these new mechanics and he's he's trying to throw the ball as hard as he can. And it's just about making mm-hmm. him a reliever now. We don't know exactly what they're going to do but it doesn't really matter. The right decision is to get Sheffield in the spot where he can actually work on those things in game and not have to worry about results. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that is pretty interesting. The idea of having him go down there and just be a pure reliever and see if you can tap into that, because I do think within justice Sheffield, there still is a good pitcher. I don't know what kind of pitcher that is, but I do think there is a good pitcher in there. Still someone that can contribute in some form or fashion. Because we saw it in 2020. He was good in 2020. We made mm-hmm. the argument that he should have been the AL Rookie of the Year over Kyle Lewis, quite frankly. <laughs> like Because he was a more consistent producer that yeah, year. Yeah, was. And, uh, you know, and he didn't even get a single vote during that process. Not even a 10th place vote. Ridiculous. Just absolutely ridiculous stuff. Um, but yeah, he, he was really good in 2020. I, I still believe that there is potential there with Justice Sheffield. It's just in the role that he was in to start the season didn't make a whole lot of sense for him. So we'll see if they can figure some stuff out here and get him on a little bit of a better and better path. Um, and if not, frankly, it might be time to just give him another opportunity elsewhere. You know, give him an opportunity somewhere where mm-hmm. he can actually go start for someone, you know, and just 
you know, it, it sucks, right? You know, because he was the big prize <laughs> on the uh, James Paxson deal. But at a certain point, you know, you got to do I, I, for me. And this is kind of how the Mariners have operated as well. You kind of just want to do right by the guy, especially if you can't give him the opportunity that he probably needs. They've done that yeah. with quite a few other dudes as well over the last couple of years. And um, yeah, so it might be we might be getting close to that point now where uh, they just, um, you know, they, they let him go um, and they, uh, right. you know, they let him see if he can uh, make it elsewhere. But um, the, but yeah, uh, we'll see uh, how that all turns out. Should be interesting to keep track of him down in Tacoma. Mm -hmm. What's up? Uh, by the way, Paul Braverman, who is the director of media relations and baseball info for the Tacoma Rainiers, has tweeted two minutes ago that Justice Sheffield will get the start for Tacoma mm -hmm. on Friday. So uh, there you go. Okay, makes his debut on Friday. All right, so his Rainiers debut. So we'll see what kind of start that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll kind of see. Uh, we'll see what kind of start that is. But um, yeah. All right, so let's turn our attention back to the Mariners Major League team uh the mariners are looking to get back on track tonight against the astros of course we're gonna dive into the pitching matchup saying get you set for the action in just a moment but real quick a reminder this episode of locked on mariners is brought to you by rock auto with the ever-increasing numbers of mix and models it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning like is your odyssey an lx or an ex and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry you you have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. And I mean, you're listening to us or watching us on a device. So after you're done listening to us, check out rockauto.com. Why choose to spend 30%? 50%, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership. For example, a Honda Odyssey fuel pump is $353 from a chain store, whereas with Rock Auto, it's only $216. Plus, Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years, and their prices are reliably low for every customer. So go to rockauto.com right after you're done listening to us and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on, and there, how did you hear about us, box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com all right so we got christian javier versus chris flexen the last time flexen pitched against this team did not go great he wasn't awful against the astros by any means but he was going up against justin verlander who absolutely shut the mariners down for their second shutout of the season uh what are you hoping to see out of flexen who's looked better in his last couple of starts yeah just continue to do what he's been doing um you know, the cutter is a really important pitch for him. It has to have movement. He has to command it. Um, otherwise, it's a batting practice fastball. So the cutter is going to be key for Chris Flexen tonight, uh, particularly when he's facing Jordan Alvarez and Michael Brantley. Um, I think I think we're going to see a little bit more of the curveball tonight than we have so far. It's a pretty good pitch. Um, he hasn't used it a ton. Uh, Flexen kind of moves back and forth between the changeup and the curveball um, as the primary off-speed pitch. So. I think we're going to see a curveball type of night from him. And if he can command that cutter, uh, particularly to the lefties, uh, then I think he's going to give the Mariners a shot to win this game. And that's really all you can ever expect out of Chris Flex and just, just keep the Mariners in it. Um, and, you know, the last two times out, he's actually been great. And he got one hard luck loss and, and you know, one nice win out of it. And so we'll see if he can, key if he can continue that trend. Um, but, yeah, I, I expect, again, curveball heavy tonight is my guess but it's all going to come down to the cutter. He has to be able to locate it um, with some regularity, 55 command on that cutter and he'll have a good night. All right. So I guess uh, we're not going to retire it. We got to do it. Picks to click. It hasn't gone well for us the last couple of times we've done it, but let's do it anyway. Let's hear who you think is going to pop off for the Mariners tonight. Hopefully they get a run tonight. I would assume that they might. <laughs> It's been nine mm -hmm. innings, or how many innings has it been since? No, 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 it's been nine innings because they scored in yeah. the last inning down in Miami. So it's been nine innings, a scoreless ball for the Mariners. Hopefully that doesn't continue uh, <laughs> for too long in this game. Who do you think is going to lead the charge for the Mariners tonight? Yeah, kind of a tough pick. Uh, Javier's a good pitcher. Um, <clears throat> fastball slider, mostly. Super high spin rates on the fastball. He likes to throw it up in the zone, so it's going to play up there. Um, he likes to throw the slider off of it. So it could be a, a pretty tough at bat. Um, you know, we saw something similar to, uh, uh, Ober, Uber, uh, Ober from uh, Minnesota, kind of similar game plans, top of the zone with the fastball and then the slider. 
Um, and it's just, it's really tough to square up the fastball because of the high spin rate. So I guess this is probably going to be a game for a lefty. Um, and if he's playing, I'm going to take Adam Frazier to have a couple base knocks um, and maybe actually make a nice play at second base for what feels like the first time all season. All right. So um, going off of our conversation in the first segment, I've decided that Jesse Winker is my pick to click. <laughs> That's right. All right. You know what? I Look, prove me to be a moron, Jesse. Please, please make me look like the biggest idiot in the world. I, I beg of you, please, please do it. I challenge you to, tonight to make me look like a big, stupid, dumb, dumb. Uh, I'm going Jesse gets his first home run tonight and a double. Mm, okay. I think, I think we get some big, big production out of Jesse. He was frustrated yesterday. I, I think Winker is obviously due for all the things that you said for what we talked about earlier on the show. He is due. Uh, so hopefully those resort those results finally come. But I'm also going to double down on on the argument as well. I'm also going to say that Julio is due for a uh, big night as well. And then we can just have the debate all over again tomorrow. <laughs> all right. uh, sounds good. That was good pod- podcasting, I think. Yeah. Um, by the way, Shannon Dreyer, <laughs> Shannon Dreyer, Shannon Dreyer, a few minutes ago, noting that Adam Frazier is taking early work in left field right now at Minute Maid Park. So. Perhaps Adam Frazier gets to start and left tonight, whereas uh, Winker DHs, or maybe Winker's out tonight. So we'll see. Well, there you uh, go. I picked Julio as well, so I am covered in case, just in case. All right, fine. Uh, my backup to Adam Frazier is um, JP Crawford. All right, cool. So we've cursed four Mariners now, so they are definitely getting shut out again tonight. My pick you to click is first. actually Christian Javier. So, oh, I like this. Actually, my yeah. pick to click tonight is Jordan Alvarez. Yep, we switched Good. it on you. Good. We switched it on yeah. you. Watch out, Astros. We've cursed you. We brought the. <laughs> we figured it out. We we figured out how to break the system now, mm-hmm. and uh, well, I, I guess that's just we'll what see. we're doing now. That, that's our. Well, yeah, we'll we'll see. We're testing the waters here, and if it works. If it works out, this might be the new thing that we do. Instead of making picks to click for the Mariners, we're making picks to click for the enemy. So that's going to do it for our show today. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. For Colby Patnode, I'm Ty Dane Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez, that's D-A-N-E-G-N-Z-L-Z, and Colby at CPAT11, that's C-P-A-T-1-1. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. And thank you again for making us your first listen of the day, just like you do here every day. We greatly appreciate your support. Now make your second listen of the day, the Locked On MLB podcast. That's where Paul Francis Sullivan, and please call him Sully, brings you his unique <laughs> perspective on the major leagues president pass as colby is dying in the background right now uh that show is free and available wherever you get your podcasts just like us so have yourself a beautiful baseball day and we'll see you tomorrow if colby's alive by then peace <laughs>